I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, regular meeting, Monday, June 18th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Shami is absent. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsey. Here. All six members present. Yes, sir. Uh, do you mind rising for the invocation tonight? Council Mayor and Lighty will do our invocation. Bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity for us to come together, Lord. We ask that you bless this city, bless this state, and bless this nation, God. Show us your grace and your healing power. So of everything we do tonight, glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Saying pledge is back here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And on the minutes. So moved. Second. Just a second. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. And it's accepted. That's 6 0. Communications none tonight. City manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the public uh, council. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. We'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, current finance director, Ms. Harris, and our soon-to-be finance director, Ms. Watson. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council, mayor, citizens in attendance. We're going to go over our May revenue and expense finance report. So for the month of May, total revenue was $483,734.40. Total expenditures for the month of May was $576,754.65, to bring the year-to-date total revenue collected of $2,655,728.58, and total expenditures year-to-date is $2,238,257.49. On the general fund revenue, we collected for the month of May $177,872.85 for a total received to date of $664,873.70. And then expenditures for the general fund for the month of May is $108,154.90. And the expense in the general fund to date is $665,320.04. And the rest of the report is attached. If there's any questions I can entertain. Council, any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, thank you, Mrs. Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Moving on with our city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of council, uh, members of the public. We'll start off in our service departments. We completed three asphalt repairs on Main Street. They were our uh, major ones. And then we have all but two water main breaks um, repaired. We are due to get our truck with the new dump body uh, installed and painted um, here any day. And we will get out and do the dirt patching for all the pothole repairs. A uh, new pool boiler was installed June 11th and is up and running. Uh, the weather that we've had since we put it in, um, it has not run uh, hardly at all because of the 90 degree weather. So that's definitely a plus there. We hired Steve Pavon for our seasonal position. He is a, C he is a holder of a Class B CDL and has been performing all tasks throughout the uh, streets, uh, cemetery, and the um, parks. We are currently in the middle and it's taken us some time, but we're performing a major repair on Tal Schroyer. In the end, it will be asphalted, but we've been uh, taking our time because we're digging right over a sewer line and we've had some underground erosion. We initially thought it was a sewer line, but we do not find any grit in three manholes below. 
So, but we're still taking our time to make sure that it's not going anywhere else and that we're not over digging this and blocking some of the uh, cavities that may be there uh, that we can't see. So uh, bear with us, we're, I think we're about halfway done with it and we're gonna take it down all the way to the other manhole even though it doesn't show uh, some areas that are not collapsing, we're gonna take it to the next one because we feel what it looks like is someone who installed it back in the day, I think it was uh, late 50s, early 60s, that there could have been a cavity there and it just finally shown up. Uh, on to the 2018 various road projects uh, for our Clark County project. Estimates are in and the over to overload White Pine, Green Heart, and Furwood. The bids are in and the sign agreement has been sent to the county via Mr. Bridge. Pre-construction meeting is Wednesday, June, this Wednesday, June 20th. And then I will report back once we have our pre-con meeting and uh, let everyone know what the start date will be for New Carlisle. And applying for CDBG funds for reconstruction of 300 block at Galewood uh, for 2019. That is at the up at the state being uh, scored and uh, see where we fit into see if we'll be awarded those funds. Uh, Scarf Road Water Tower. Uh, that project started May 15th. Uh, the tower is complete and back online. We had to do a and it wasn't part of the as, as far as the tower itself project, but. The meter pedestal and a few things that we had that were not part of it um, when we had to shut the power off to install the mixer. Uh, we were not in code with DPNL's new meter pedestal, so they wouldn't allow us to keep it. So we had to spend an additional $2,000 to have a new, pe new meter pedestal put in and a new meter box because mice has got Oh, excuse me, has gotten into the current control panel and basically had chewed enough of the wires we felt it was unsafe. So um, now the new box we have is a NEMA 4X, which is basically air, water, weather type. So they shouldn't be able to find their way into that. Uh, traffic signal upgrade project, we have gotten the appraisals. The appraisals have been reviewed. I just got emailed on Friday those uh, appraisals. Once uh, Mr. Bridge and I look those over, we will send those up and then they will make contact with those certain property owners to offer um, the uh, proper appraisal amount and then we'll get moving on with that project. And that is all I have for my report. I can entertain any questions on those items or any others. Council? Mr. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Kick, uh, <clears throat> has anybody went up in the Northwood plant and looked at all the high grass and some of the buildings you got holes in the roof? I'm sorry? Has anybody went up in the Northwood plant and started looking at the high grass and a lot of these houses have got holes in the roof? Yeah, go ahead. That's not Mr. Kitko's department. Um, that doesn't fall under his jurisdiction. We have been uh, looking at that. Uh, Gemma, our code enforcement officer, has been on top of that. As far as the buildings that have structural damage to them, we'll be looking at ways to partner with the county to, re to remedy that. We don't have the funds to do it in this year's budget. One of the things I did recommend to one of the council members is allocating some money next year to have that in a line item to demo some of these houses. Okay. Yeah. Council? Mr. Mr. Kiko, uh, you said you're gathering loans, two to four year loans. Is that to redo the the dilapidated equipment in the water plant? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't miss you. You're talking about the influent building? Yeah, yeah no, the I'm, wastewater. Yeah, on the wastewater plant. Um, I haven't had it much update for that. I am looking at that, but we kind of put that on hold until we get our engineering finalized to get the, the two pieces of this project in. But yes, it's part of that wastewater influent building. <clears throat> what about the, uh, the other things at the sewer plant? These are the two major things, and there's other things that are going on currently that we're not using loans. We're using our current funds that we have to do some uh, repairs. Okay, thank you. Council, anything else? I have a question, Mr. Pico. How often is that box used that had mice in it that chewed through the wiring? Well, it's, I assume it's probably not used often. Well, no, it's, it's the main, um, like your panel in your house, your 100 amp panel, it's just been there since 74. Okay. And so it's an old style with a push button, and they were able to get right in by the front. But okay. it's, it's used uh, day in and day out. Okay, I was just wondering, I was like, man, that thing must never be opened if rats have been in there. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Council, anything else? Nope. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. And moving on with our city manager report, our fire discussion with fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, council, and citizens. Uh, for the month of May, the New Kalal Fire Division responded to 97 EMS calls in the city, eight in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to nine fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid. 
uh, Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 already being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and we answered three mutual aid calls for Bethel Park. In the month of May, the fire division responded to six overdose calls. Total run volume right now for the, for the division up to date is 625 runs. We're average, averaging over 100 runs a month. Uh, we are starting our CPR program back up. If anyone is in need of CPR class for individual or, or groups, please just contact the station at 845-8401. And if no one's there, just leave a message for us and uh, the lieutenant that's in charge of that will get back with you and try to set that up. Other than that, everything else going pretty good. Right. Council? That's it, Chief, thank you. Thank you, Chief Trustee. And moving on with our uh, police discussion. You taking it? Deputy Allender. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, Sergeant Underwood could not make the meeting tonight, so I'm just going to read straight off the report he had prepared. Um, for the month of May, new call deputies were dispatched to 61 calls. Amongst those was an assault, 14 calls for domestic violence, three thefts, a non-injury crash. We did not respond to any injury crashes. Uh, there were eight citations issued. We did not take any drug complaints. We had a total of five overdoses and five suicide attempts. Um, amongst other things, let's see, a Miami Valley bulk smuggling task force operation resulted in a seizure of $3.6 million worth of fentanyl on Prentice Drive in New Carlisle. Clark County and New Carlisle deputies assisted the task force in the operation that also received 50 pounds of marijuana, a large amount of cash, along with nine kilos of fentanyl. Arrested for three adult males from Mexico and also one adult male from New Carlisle. New Carlisle will be receiving um, the two new deputies that will replace Deputy Cruz and Anderson. That will take place in late August, um, that transition will. The deputies will be Joseph Liming and Nick Moody. Uh, they're both looking forward to coming out and patrolling the city. As always, if you notice anything suspicious, contact the Sheriff's Office at 328-2560. And that's all I have. Council. I have a question, but it would actually go to Randy, not to Mrs. Allender, which is during that time that we're replacing these deputies before August, July, will we still, in July, will we have deputies to cover us? I'll set the two. I'm sorry. During the month of July, we're, we're going to lose, uh, we're going to get new deputies in August, but during July, we'll have replacement deputies here, right? Uh, I'll have to um, look at the contract. I'll make sure we have something. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Thank you. No, that's kind of right. All right. Council, anything else? Nope. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Deputy Aller. Mr. Allender, moving on with the city manager's report under informational items. Uh, Twin Creeks into the zoning code. We've been working with the residents of Twin Creeks. They want to abolish their covenants. And then once they abolish those covenants, they have to be uh, uh, into our zoning code for zoning regulations. We still are waiting on legislation from the attorneys. So once that's going on, uh, once that's completed, there'll be uh, legislation in front of council to approve or deny that switch. New playground equipment. Also, contract is still under review with their attorney on Playworld Mid-States. I wanted to release all that information today with the new playground equipment we're going to be getting. But since that legislation piece is not ready yet, I do have to hold on to that. I'm hoping I can get it done by the next council meeting. Tax budget public hearing, and I do need a motion to approve this. The Howard Revised Code states that we do have to have a public hearing for our tax budget. Our tax budget is not our operating budget for 2019. It is simply a smaller document that says we need X amount of property tax revenue to, to fulfill our needs for 2019. Um, oh, the Ohio Revised Code does mandate a public hearing be set for that. I am uh, suggesting that we do it at 6.30 p.m., which is 30 minutes before the start of the next council meeting, and they will be voting on that tax budget later on that evening, so it should be fresh in everyone's mind. Council. Mr. Mayor. Uh, if I may, can we backpedal just a little bit? I didn't realize that Deputy Cruz is here, and I wanted to ask her a question on the, the police report. Is the is the bike out there? Yeah, it's right there. Can, can she give it a little show? Sure. And talk about it? Mr. Mayor, are you okay with that? Yes, go ahead, Deputy Cruz. I know we were going to have him brought in, and I just thought since we had a decent crowd, it would be nice to show him. Can we turn the lights on, though, because that's the cool yeah, part of the whole thing. They brought two bikes. Never figured you want to bring it up here, Deputy Cruz? Maybe. Please and thank you. I don't know if she had it in here. Yeah. 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 Y
this. Speed is that, Deputy? I think it's 15. 15? Ride a lot better than the last one. A little much better. <laughs> Looks a lot better. <laughs> and this again, Mr. Bridge or Mr. Mayor, who wants to answer it. We never have a deputy on a bike as long as we, if we have a deputy on a bike, we also have someone in a car as well. They're right? never on, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you. So do we have a motion to set the proposed hearing for the tax budget on 6.30, July 2nd? So move. Second. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Six zero. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Uh, now we're moving on to comments from members of the public. Please limit public comments to five minutes or less. Do I hear any comments from members of the public? Mr. Craybach. Do you mind giving your name and address, please? John, John Craybacher, 307 North Henry. I'm here for two reasons. And one, one of them is the bicentennial clock is not working. Are you, is that going to ever get fixed? Uh, the one half is working and, and the other half is no. We, I got to get a hold of the company. I tried to take the glass off of it and it's kind of beyond me without breaking it. I'm not familiar with that. So I got to get a hold of the burden company to help me get that tore apart. Okay. Um, I want to also thank whoever did the grass last week. It's got the grass around the um, around Madison Street. They did a great job. You know, they got really close to the uh, water towers and stuff, and it looks really good. And I wanted to speak a little bit about the community garden. And I noticed, it, you know, on your agenda tonight is an ordinance for a memo of understanding. And I just want to explain that in case you have, you know, ahead of time. Now I want to tell you about the growth of the community garden. You know, three years ago we came, and we, uh, Linda and I, and we asked council you know, for a piece of, piece of land, which was approximately 600 West Madison Street, uh, which is on the other side of the school. It wasn't being used, hasn't been used for a while. Did, do they have it, Randy? Do they have it? It's not in this packet. It's not in the last packet. packet. Okay. So, so we came and asked, and after a lot of discussion, discussion, it was granted for us to be used. The problem is we we've been we've been working with a handshake and a nod. We have grown, and we're going to grow. And the whole thing is, there's a lot of grant opportunities out there for us to grow. Several things have come in this, these grant opportunities. And one of the questions is, do we have legal permission to use that land? And as we know, a handshake and a nod is not a legal document. So with talks with the attorney, talks with Randy, we decided to have a memo of understanding so that we can both understand you know, the pros and you know, who does what to what. You know, one of the things that was liability insurance. You know, who's going to be liable if somebody trips over a plot and breaks their foot? Well, we got liability insurance, you know, to, to okay that. We were able this year to even hire two people. And we hired two people through a grant through the Church of the Brethren who, who allowed us to have, you know, $5,000 to, to have a garden coordinator along with an intern or somebody to help the garden coordinator. 
growth is there. We are growing. You see us at the farmers market. We're very, in, uh, with the you know we're very, in tune with the farmers market. You know where there are several other opportunities out there. We have applied to be a 501c3. We are now incorporated, and this is just in three years. And we have visions for further, for further growth. So that's why the memo of understanding is very important tonight, and I hope that everybody votes yes for it. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? You mind saying your name and address, please, Mr. Jacker? My name is Paul Shackro. I live uh, outside of town, but uh, I want to know what uh, is going on out the cemetery in the last two weeks. Can you evaluate on that? Am I allowed, Mr. Mayor? Mr. Rich. Sure. First off, I'm sorry for what happened. I was out at a conference. Um, I received all the paperwork today. I will be investigating it. Uh, I will turn it over to Mr. Kiko to give as much detail as he can because it did fall under his department. You just now got that and that two weeks ago? I, when did this happen? What, what are you referring to to make sure? Because I don't know what happened two weeks ago. Um, my uncle's grave was uh, destroyed. That was a week ago Monday. Yes, uh, two weeks ago today. That was just, it was just this past Monday whenever we got the um, the pictures. I do have the reports. I have the pictures. The grave was dug. We had a rainstorm. We had to redig it out, and then we backfilled one side of the grave. Went and got another load of dirt with our Kubota cart. Went to the other side, and the ground gave way underneath our cart, and our cart fell into the grave site. Uh, Ron Wright immediately called our superintendent. Superintendent immediately called uh, the funeral home who was in charge of all the, of the uh, visit. Um, they told us we needed to get everything removed because when the cart went in, it damaged the vault and it damaged the casket. So we had to remove that. Newcomer funeral home came, picked up that um, uh, vault and then picked up the casket, did whatever they do to make it new. And then um, we got it back and then we uh, have reburied it since. Um, so um, that's what happened with it, but the ground collapsed underneath it. It is the first time in 34 years that we've ever had anything like this happen with a wall collapse underneath our piece of equipment. Council, anything on that topic? <clears throat> Mr. Chakra, I'm going to apologize on behalf of the city for what you had to go through. Uh, I didn't know until today, so. I didn't agree to see see the phone call, I just happened to stop back by the cemetery after a uh, meal, and there it was. Mm. They already contacted the funeral home, but they never contacted me. Uh, so, so. Thank you for coming, Mr. Shafra. Uh, Mr. Bridge, you said you were going to look into this? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from members of the public? Mr. Lindsay, you have something? Mr. Bridge, yes. uh, I for one would like to know the status on this when you find something out and what is going to do to remedy this for the family. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. <clears throat> Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none. <clears throat> no committee reports tonight, no resolutions, ordinances. Mrs. Berner. All right. Ordinance 18-11, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the New Carlisle Community Garden. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. <clears throat> Move to adopt ordinance 18-11. I'll second. second. Mr. Cook. An explanation of this ordinance is to have an agreement between the city of New Carlisle and the garden, as Mr. Kraybacher got up there and described. 
Um, it has been fantastic to sit back and watch that garden take off because I know you guys do a lot of good things with it. Um, this did not make it into the packet, however it was in last week when it was introduced. Normally I put them in back to back, this time it was an honest mistake, it just couldn't make it in. So hopefully uh, everyone read it last time around. Um, it's a pretty solid MOU. Uh, they will have at least a million dollars in liability insurance, and there's better yet, there's more stuff in there to define about what particular part of the land that they could use. Fantastic. Council, anything? Mr. Mayor. Thanks for setting this all up. I mean, that's uh, good things going on in the city. I know you guys are going to feed a lot of people, so keep up the good work, and thank mm -hmm. you for getting this done. Mr. Mayor. Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Britt. Yes. The, uh, this memorandum of understanding that's just that if somebody gets hurt there, that they are liable and the city is not? There's, yeah. the, their liability insurance will kick in. Okay. But without the MOU, there is no legal guideline that says who's responsible for what. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't impact the city at all on mm -hmm. anything that happens there? No. And we still retain ownership of the land? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, anything else? Hearing none, Mrs. Parker. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Ordinance accepted, 6 0. All right. Moving on. Ordinance 18 12 E, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. An ordinance employing a finance director and declaring an emergency. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. Move to action ordinance 18 12E. Second. Second. Mr. Lowry. An explanation to this ordinance. Um, when we hire uh, management personnel um, for the charter, it's, it's my decision with council approval after we go through the interview process. Um, if I can just take on, I want to put Ms. Watson on the spot, but. We interviewed, we had three scheduled. We had probably around 20 applicants. The candidate pool um, was okay, but of course you bring in your top three. That's how we did it during the time frame that we have. Um, Ms. Watson was a, was a go for me probably within the first sentence. She had used records retention. And I've told her this a couple of times, that's, you know, bestow my beating heart. You know, records retention is a big component of this. There's another component to, to government accounting and that is knowing the specific laws that go into what you can and cannot do with government funds. It truly is a specialized skill set. I am happy to report that Ms. Watson has over 14 years experience. She is also the uh, Bethel Township Miami County clerk as well. So um, she interviewed fantastically. She knows her stuff. Uh, we're all very excited to have her uh, become part of the administration team, but we're also very sad to see Ms. Harris go. Um, it's very bittersweet for us right now at the administration building, but I think we have bright things on the horizon. We wish the best of luck to Ms. Harris, and we also welcome Ms. Watson on board as well. So um, the final step into this is having council approve her appointment. Um, it's not, they won't read the ordinance in whole, but we will be bringing her in at 52,500 yearly and that is because of her massive extensive experience. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, also, Mr. President, we was on the understanding back in June 4th meeting that all applicants would come for a chance to be discussed with, with council. I, I don't know where that came from. That comes from you, sir. Well, you misunderstood me because what I meant is the final applicant goes to you guys, not all of them. I hire, the, all the administration hires come under me. When I introduce the city manager, they only talk to me. So, did you have to get a, yeah. so, I may have misspoke or maybe it was a misunderstanding, but the, we don't bring all the candidates in for you guys to look at that. It's, it's my decision to make a recommendation, recommendation to you guys based on the final. Council, anything else? Mrs. Parker? Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? 
Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? It'll be great to have you aboard, ma'am. Thank you very much for your application and a great interview, apparently, what Mr. Bridge said. Yes. Set at 6-0. Ordinance C 18-13E Introduction Public Hearing and Action Tonight. An ordinance adding and deleting authorized sign <coughs> signatories on all financial accounts of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Council. So move. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, we have to have so many signatures on file at the banks that we use so we can sign and process payroll checks, AP checks, account payable checks, things of that neighbor, nature. Um, since Ms. Harris is are no longer a full-time finance director, we do need to remove her from those signatory accounts and then place Ms. Watson, our new finance director, on. Discussion? Mr. Bridge, when will these signatures uh, be changed? Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Okay. It is an emergency ordinance, so be back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Council? All right. All right. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Light? Yes. That's 6 0. Moving on, Ordinance 18-14, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on July 2nd, 2018. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the City of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2019 and submitting the same to the Auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Do you want to read on to other business, Mrs. Yes. Thank you. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. Crime Watch meeting will be held July 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith <coughs> Shelter House. And the community-wide garage sale will take place this weekend, Saturday, June 23rd, and Sunday, June 24th. Thank you. Council, anything else? Another business? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Mr. Cook had his hand first. Oh, I'm sorry. To you. No, no, go ahead, sir. Mr. Cook. Sorry. No, I didn't even see him. No problem. I got a couple of comments. Yes, sir. Number one, I would like to congratulate Deputy Sheila Cruz on her promotion and thank her for the untold amount of hours and work she has put into this city. Without a doubt, in my mind, and I spoke to her the other day and told her that she's going to be terribly missed. She informed me that her replacement was pretty good at that point, but that will come time to see. But Deputy Cruz, I wish to thank you on behalf of the city for your dedication and the time that you spent with us. <clears throat> now, second, I've received quite a few phone calls the past couple of weeks in regards to our previous meeting where a couple of councilmen have come under fire. When I decided to run for council, I ran on a financial stability of our citizens' tax money. With the current things that are going on with the present council, I believe that we are going to be spending citizens' tax money in a frivolous and ridiculous manner. As you know, in the last council meeting, two council meetings were two council members were charged with misconduct. According to our charter, they will be afforded a hearing upon these charges. There are several things that could happen with these hearings. According to the charter, in order to be removed from council, five yes votes are needed to remove said council member. In the event said council member should be removed, he would more than likely seek resolution through the judicial system. 
This judicial system in the past has been found that a council member needs to be guilty of a felony to be removed from his seat. This method seems to generate large legal charges and a settlement with an injured party could be very costly. Legal fees could possibly amount to between thirty and three hundred thousand dollars. If this were to play out, it would devastate our general fund and place this city in a very difficult position. The second way for this to play out would be the council members would not receive the necessary five yes votes to remove them from their seats. With this then meaning they would remain in their respective position and in my personal opinion, the working together for the best interests of this city would be very difficult working environment for both the administration and council. The charter, however, gives citizens another option, that being a recall petition. A member recalled must serve at least six months of his term, which would mean at this date there are three council members eligible for recall. July 1, three more are eligible, and with the seventh being eligible on August 15th. The last method would save the city a great amount of money and reduce legal fees, and the citizens would then have a say in this matter, rather than just five, just seven of us. In the, in the event that recall member were to receive sufficient number of votes to be recalled, the recall member would not then have judicial recourse. Cost of a specific, of a, sorry, cost of a special election would be considerably less than the legal fees that would be brought about with the council removal process. And as I said, I've had several calls wanting to know what the options were and what could happen with this hearing. I think I've just outlined those. Those are available through your charter if anybody has any questions. Council? Larry? I don't know if we're adjourning or it's oh, other okay. business or whatever you have to no, say. No, I didn't know if hey. we were waiting on a common friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's my turn. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, after our touching a little bit on our last meeting, what Cook just did, um, I learned some new information <clears throat> myself. So I wanted, to, you know, I felt that it would be proper for me to amend a motion I made at the last meeting in order to remove the mayor for misconduct. Uh, at the last meeting, for those of you who weren't here, it was stated in the motion and in general conversation with everybody that the mayor had, had received two uh, warnings, per se, from the, from the city about the unfiled taxes for the five years. Um, it, it has been brought to me that it wasn't two letters, that it was actually four. Uh, one on July 18 of 2014 and another on January 18 of 2018. So I would like to make a motion to add those two dates to my original motion to put on the record. What was the 18 date? Uh, it's January 18, 2018, which was sent from the CCA Tax Administration, which was a, uh, it, yeah. That's interesting. I can't wait for the hearing then. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Lauer. So that is my motion to add those two to public record on my previous motion. Second. Just as a record, basically. Mm -hmm. Where are those certified letters? I do not know, uh, cert certified or not. I'm sorry, it's just information about letters. Don't know how they're mailed. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Council? Yep. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else. Do we need to vote on that? We didn't last. We didn't last time, unless the rules keep changing. But I don't know.
Is there actually the, the, the motions well, that you made last week? Made a, making a motion to add them to my original. It's a motion to amend right. the previous motion. Yes, sir. This is not the same kind of motion that was made last week. So the general proceeding for a motion is you make the motion, you second it, it goes to a vote unless another rule says otherwise. Well, in the motion of a hearing, it would say you need a second. So I would assume this is not this is amending error. the motion, though. Correct? That he made last week, which doesn't need a second. So why would this one need a second? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a council person. As long as it's on the record, that's all. That's all that matters to me. So. You guys didn't make motions last time. You didn't second the motions last time. No. No, there was no votes on any of it. Right. So I would there were no why votes on any of it. Probably don't need one for this. Yeah. Okay. So then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lowry, just a couple other things, real quick. Uh, the farmers market. I only got to get a, I had a chance to just go down there for a few minutes, but it looked really good. It looked a lot bigger than previous years. I know uh, the New Palau News had a band up on the on the porch, and it looked really good. They sounded great. The food was good. The vendors looked like they were doing a lot of good business. So, uh, congratulations to them and who put that on. Also, uh, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the New Carlisle Pool will be the first ever uh, New Carlisle Swim Meet, which uh, they had named their team the New Carlisle Mighty Ducks. So they will be going against the Elks out of Springfield. And uh, that'll be at 6 p.m. It's open to the public, no admission to get in. And then uh, that's it. And I have one last thing uh, before we adjourn. Is there any way, Mr. Bridge, now this, this may not be possible, so I want to ask you, uh, when an individual in the school system can't afford their school lunches, they get on free and reduced. Is there any way to implement the same type of program for pool passes? Because we have a lot of citizens who can't afford to go to the city pool, or if there's a way to prove like proof of income, just like with free and reduced lunch. Is it on these 90, 85, 87 degrees days, I would like to see potentially if that would, if that's a way up to do it. I know that's more of us, but I wanted to. Um, I, I think it, that that's considered an enterprise fund for us, so it has to be self-supported, and I don't think the auditor is going to look too good about giving subsidized passes out to okay. people, unfortunately. I will double check with that. Um, right. Will you please? But almost positive um, that's not going uh, to be something possible to be the state of the line. Okay. I just wanted to know on that front. Uh, mm -hmm. Then my next question was, I just found out today that you're looking to hire outside counsel for this potential remover hearing. I have nothing to do with that. You have to talk to our attorneys. Okay. I have nothing to do we were told that you would be hiring outside counsel. So I just wonder what the cost was, the hourly rate, how much it's going to charge the city. So, I haven't. So. Uh, contracts or anything that will be through me, but it's over the 20000 You guys have to vote. Okay. But I have nothing to do with it. The hearing scheduling in or nothing like that. Okay, Mr. Cook. One other thing. June 30th, mm -hmm. we're going to have a fireworks <laughs> demonstration. Yes. Mm -hmm. Up at Haddock's Field. <coughs> Y'all would like to attend? So be it. We'll be about dusk. I think we've got at least one food vendor that I'm aware of, and possibly two. So, look to see you all there. Council, Ms. Mr. Mr. Lowry. On your last subject, I didn't, I didn't know if you knew, it, and we noticed this a lot down at the, at the pool, after six, I think the rate drops, drops. from six to it three. It does, yeah. And she notices, they notice a, quite a jump actually after six. Uh, okay. A lot of people come mm -hmm. in after six just for that reason, so yeah. FYI. I think, I, and not to interject, but I think something that even if the state would say yes, which I really don't think they will, I, I would recommend not doing it to council. I think it's a good gesture, but if we have 40 passes, then we gotta we got more lifeguards on duty. We gotta have more of everything, but we're not bringing on income for that. So it's something we're gonna have to watch very, very closely. I mean, um, maybe we can look for like a reduced emission rate pass even more deep down at the discount. So I, you know, as long as we charge like a dollar or something, get into so the state see some revenue stream coming into that fund. Um, but we gotta watch how many free stuff we let in there because. Then we got to maybe not like here. I said free or reduced, you know, yeah. reduced pricing or sure. Free. I mean, everyone knows that poverty is an issue that I keep trying to address. And sure. So I want to keep that up. It's so. a public pool. It's doing fantastic. I think if we can give back a little bit. Let's try it out. All right. <coughs> Mr. Cobb. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, we are all elected officials by the citizens of the community. Yes, sir. Right now we have 
a break in this. Everybody's wanting to fight everybody. I think we need to get back to the orbits of what we were elected to do. I mean, it, it's almost like I'm not playing anymore. I'm going to get up and take my marbles home. That's exactly what it's like. I think we've got to start turning this around, start listening to the citizens, because people are going to move out and not want to move in the city. I don't know work, work, what it's going to take to do this, but we, we got to work good. I agree. Thank you. Mr. Light. We need to excuse, I get ready to ask that. Councilman Shamey. So I'd like to make a motion to excuse Councilman Shamey. Second. Uh, I would like to state why Mr. Shamey's gone. He had a family emergency. Thank you. And a second, so Mayor second. Reynolds. Oh, the second was for oh. Lindsay. Yes. Okay. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. And Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Excuse? Six zero. Mr. Lowry. Thank oh. you have the chair. Mr. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. We are adjourned. <clears throat>